new differential transformer architecture reduces the size of the model by about 35% and the necessary tokens to train it by also about 35% while keeping the same performance. It does this by amplifying attention to relevant tokens in the context and cancelling out attention to the irrelevant tokens. So just by roughly looking into this formula, they have the standard attention calculation and they also calculate the noise. So this is attention noise and then, uh, so this is attention to irrelevant tokens and then they subtract attention to irrelevant tokens and then they just get the attention to relevant tokens. It has better uh, key information retrieval, hallucination mitigation, in-context learning and reduction of activation outliers which helps in quantization. Quick disclaimer, I understand this at level uh, 3, so methodology proofs code, maybe even level 4, where I can compare it to other research papers. So I want to scroll down immediately to this image. This is important image to explain this. They have a classic transformer and then their differential transformer. So in the classic transformer, so what they do in both of these cases is they have some long text, hundreds of thousands of tokens, maybe millions, for example. There is a beginning of sequence. There is a bunch of random text. They call this context, but imagine this as random text. There is the answer to their question that they're going to ask. And then there is a lot of like irrelevant stuff. And then uh, there is query in the end. So the query in the end, it's just the question. So in the end, they just append the question. So for example, the question could be, uh, in which year did this and that happen? And then that information is contained in like this little like sentence or something in the middle of this irrelevant stuff. When I say random text, I don't mean like random letters. I just mean like irrelevant text that can be real text, real words. And then let's take a look at the other, like their method. You see how like this answer has huge attention here. And all of this other uh, irrelevant stuff, stuff is like dry, drowned out, minimized. So this is why they achieve a high score on this test, which is called multi-needle retrieval. So needle in a haystack, you probably know when you have a lot of like irrelevant or like a lot of text, like a whole novels of text and then there is somewhere like one random like a sentence that says for example uh, I have three apples and then they're gonna ask like how many apples do you have and like there is only one that like that needle in all of this like haystack and when they said multi-needle it means like multiple of these sentences throughout the, the haystack and the classic transformer does uh, retrieves it 55% of the time and their method retrieves the relevant answer 85% of the time. The main purpose, the main goal of this research is to find out how to cancel out attention scores for irrelevant texts so that only the relevant text is left and its attention is amplified. So the query uh, gives attention only to the relevant text and it cancels out attention to irrelevant text interesting claim they make is that this method only requires 65% of model size and training tokens to achieve the same performance in large language models as the traditional transformers. So it seems to me that this is a direct claim that they just made transformers 35% easier to make. And it's also better in key information retrieval, hallucination mitigation and in-context learning. It also helps uh, reduce outliers in model activations, which prevents, uh, provides new opportunities for quantization. I talked about outliers and quantization in my previous video about uh, sage attention, so you can check it on this channel. And uh, they basically say here that you should basically use a diff transformer instead of regular transformer, transformer for LLMs. The main thing they do is they replace uh, conventional softmax attention with the differential attention. So they just replace this softmax part of the calculation. And they also add a pre-RMS norm and SWIG glue as improvements following LAMA. So this is not their invention. Their invention is this differential softmax thing. If we take a look at these maths here, so we have this X is input uh, of a bunch of tokens and then each token is represented in a vector embedding so n is the number of tokens let me zoom in d is the dimension of each embedding vector for each token 
So we have uh, queries, one first query matrix, second query matrix, first key matrix, sec uh, second key matrix, and only one value matrix. But this has a 2D uh, dimension. So 2x dimension here. And then uh, we get the input x, which is tokens times dimensions. And we multiply with this, um, how, what do you call this? The like weights matrix for queries. And this weight matrix uh, creates uh, one query matrix and second query matrix. So two of them. And then same uh, here. And you just need uh, one value matrix. So here we can see the main difference between the classic attention formula and this dif uh, differential attention. The classic attention would be just this. But then uh, they also have this like lambda, which is a, a learnable parameter that adjusts the strength of this part. So you subtract this, but this is a Q1, this is Q2, same goes for K. So this is the first set of matrices, second set of matrices. And the idea is that this should learn the noise, the noise, yeah. And then when you subtract the noise from this guy, then you get like the most important things remain. And then they uh, made lambda a bit more complex. So they put e to the, like this, minus e to this. This is q1, q2, and then this initial value of lambda. So they found that these particular values were good in initialization and practice. And the reason they made uh, lambda more complex is so that model can learn more complex uh, structures in the, from the data. This idea that they are explaining where they take a difference between uh, two different uh, soft mass attention functions to cancel out the noise. Uh, they took this from electrical engineering where they, when they design uh, attention canceling headphones, where they also take difference between uh, two functions of noise and then all of the noise, the same values are gonna cancel out and only the signal will remain. And they also say that you can implement this into flash attention to make it significantly faster. They also implement multi-head differential attention. So basically they have these matrices so, uh, for projecting, so for projecting input onto queries, that means creating queries from input, creating keys from input, creating values from input. And they say i belongs to from one to number of heads. And then the scalar lambda is shared between heads in the same layer. Mathematics for differential attention heads. So that for each head, we calculate differential attention by passing in these values. And then this is a layer normalization. So we pass in the head. They use RMS norm. And then we multiply with this constant. So it scales the normalization uh, as required. To align the gradients with the original transformers so they can inherit similar hyperparameters and stabilize the training. And so in the end, they concatenate all of the heads, multiply it with some learnable parameter, and that's how you get multi-head attention. Now, I'm not exactly sure like what the function of this like learnable parameter is maybe to change the dimensions, maybe to learn something or to maybe convert uh, this like concatenation into some fixed mat size matrix. So maybe we can, we can like figure that out as we go. If we take a look at this graph that does that explains the same thing, we have some input, then we split it into uh, two uh, Q, Q, so two Q matrices, two key matrices, one value matrix. We have a bunch of heads here, each head has this formula that I described earlier, group normalization, which is RMS in uh, norm in this uh, case. We multiply with this constant, concatenate, pass through the linear layer. Let's also figure out this pseudo code. So we have differential attention function, takes input, uh, query projection matrix, key projection matrix, value projection matrix, and this learnable parameter lambda then um, multiplies, matrix multiplies input and uh, query projection matrix, then splits it into uh, Q and Q1 and Q2. Now, I think we did not explain how this splits it, so I think we didn't even read it yet. So same for keys, and then value is just one. 
matrix. Then this is the scaling factor. So calculate first attention. Uh, so this is with Q1 and K1, and then second attention scores with uh, Q2, K2, and then return softmax of A1 minus lambda times softmax of A2 time uh, matrix multiply this with, with this uh, value matrix. Then we have this function as well. So the inputs here are same and the learnable projection matrix and then their learn learnable parameter lambda. And so we apply group norm. But first, of course, uh, we pass all of these like heads for, for i in range heads. We call this differential tension function and then we pass everything through group normalization. We multiply it with this uh, constant and then concatenate these like heads and then uh, mat mul with this learnable projection matrix. I just want to mention that, that I'm still learning and understanding all this kind of stuff, this mathematics. So I don't have 3D animations in my head of how all of this works. So if I didn't explain this completely, feel free to like do some research or ask uh, Claude, ChatGPT and stuff. So overall architecture, there is L layers stacked, a number of layers. Each layer is defined uh, like this. So we have output of the layer is equal to multi-head and then uh, norm normalization of the input of the layer plus residual connection from the input to the output. And then you pass this output here, you apply uh, layer norm and you pass through this linear layer and other residual connection. And then that's how you get the input to the next layer. So this SWI glue is more advanced than a normal feedforward network. So it combines switch activation function and gated linear unit. So this X is input to the whole, the, the like beginning tokens. And then this is a learnable parameter, learnable and learnable parameters. This is element wise multiplication. And then we have uh, these weird dimensions. So this is the best I can explain. It's not 100% clear to me either. In their experiments, they first compare it to a normal transformer, then they extend the length to 64K uh, tokens. Then they test it in key information retrieval, contextual hallucination evaluation, and uh, in context learning. Then they see how differential transformer can reduce outliers, which helps with quantization. And they also uh, do extensive tests for the design choices. Then they explain in more detail how exactly they are doing these experiments. We see that here, like diffusion, uh, differential transformers are winning in comparison to these other transformers. We can see down that it also uh, learns faster. So we have number of, of uh, parameters from 830 million to 13 billion. And the loss is getting reduced uh, faster. So you need 38 uh, percent fewer parameters and you need 36 percent fewer training tokens the text tokens here we can see cumulative average negative log likelihood lower is better on book data uh, differential transformers leverages long context more effectively so you see here that it becomes lower faster Here we can see multi-needle retrieval results in 64,000 length of tokens. So uh, they just inject like some small information sentence into a big chunk of text and see how well the model can uh, find it. So if we uh, go like from 8K, 16K, 24K tokens, in 8K, in 8K it retrie retrieves it pretty well, but then up to 64 it does not retrieve it too well. And then uh, diff transformer, it's a lot more green and a lot more uh, correct retrievals. So this is just technical information, like how they perform the text, the test. I think uh, I'm not gonna like bother with this. This is just very dry. Then we have many short classifications. So they give it a bunch of examples and tell it to classify them 
the data into the groups, into classes. So here we have six classes, 50 classes, uh, 77 classes, 150 classes. And so the diff transformer outperforms here gets around 88% uh, accuracy here. The classic gets 70. So this is 21% improvement. This improvement is 10.4% and 5%. So it looks like uh, on these, like where there is less classes, the improvement is bigger. Then they test for hallucinations. So they got this text summarization data set and question answering data set. So usually they like give the text and then ask a question and then the model is supposed to like look into the text that it was given and answer the question. And they evaluate it with uh, GPT-4. They just like ask, give the GPT for the text and the answer the question and then ask if this uh, was hallucinated based on this text or not. Because in previous studies, they found that GPT-4 judges similarly as humans, so you can just automate judgment with GPT-4. And here we can see that diff achieves higher scores than classic transformer in like text summarization data set and question answering data set. <clears throat> and they also reduce uh, outlier activations. In large language models, a subset of activations manifest with significantly larger values compared to the majority a phenomenon commonly called activation outliers. So uh, the main problem this causes is you cannot quantize. So for example, here in this graph, they have a model that's 16 bits, and then they quantize it to 8 bits, uh, 6 bits, 4, 4 bits, and the accuracy on Hella Swag uh, data set goes down dramatically as you go for, from 6 to 4 in the classic transformer but in diff transformers, it doesn't go down uh, so much because this differentiation is reducing outliers as well. Conclusion, in this work, we introduce differential transformer, which amplifies attention to the relevant context while canceling noise. It has all of the benefits that we explained and also can be easily implemented with flash attention. Now that's it, but if you scroll down, we can see that they also have like this gradient flow of this differential transformer and all of the mathematics here. So if you are interested, I'm not going to be explaining this because I will probably need a lot of time to even understand this myself, but I do plan on understanding this as well. So if you want to recreate the experiments, you can also scroll down and do it. I think they have like code and other graphs and uh, tutorials here. Thank you for watching. See you in the next paper review. Oi, hope you enjoyed today's guest lecture. Make sure to check out all their social medias, might even have their own YouTube channel. That's all down in the description. If they do have their own YouTube channel, chances are their videos go up there before they go up here, all right? So go check them out. If you wanna be a guest lecturer, let me know. I have an info form, also link in description as to how you can do that. No background necessary. You just have to be an enthusiastic learner and open about what you don't know, right? If you think this whole program of guest lectures is a good idea or not, let me know. And in general, of course, I always heavily encourage open science, open learning, uh, open sharing of what we do not know and our learning journey. I hope that you all can kind of join me in that philosophy here on this channel. Don't leave yet. If you got this far, you're gonna love this video or this playlist. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the YouTube things. Join the Discord server, follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, and consider supporting me monthly either through Patreon or by hitting that YouTube join button down below. For as low as $1 per month, you can get early access to my videos. Or if you're a one-time payment kind of person, hit up my Venmo. And if you wanna borrow my brain for a bit, consider booking a paid consultation video call. All of those links are over in my link tree. And uh, yeah, end of video.